I'm going to be showing you how to do three different types of AI following the player in Unity. Using the default nav mesh system, you can decide what one's right for you after watching this video. Alright everybody, we're going to start with the standard Unity beginning scene stuff. Go ahead and create a new scene and make a terrain. You can resize it to whatever you want. I personally feel like 1000 by 1000 is massive, so I changed it to 100 by 100 for this project. I'm also going to be using the Unity standard assets first person controller as our character and we're also going to be making just a regular cube for our enemy then you can go ahead and right click in the inspector and choose to create a new script and name it something like enemy follow it's not too important just know what it is quick interruption i am releasing my first massive multiplayer game on steam and would really appreciate if you wishlist it so if you don't mind i have a link in the description it helps me out a lot, and it is a completely free-to-play game. The game uses some of the concepts from this video, so I figured it'd be a perfect place to plug it. First thing you're going to need to do before even creating any parameters is adding the UnityEngine.ai. After you've done this, we go ahead and make our few parameters. First is going to be our target. Let's go ahead and name that my target for now. Next up is going to be our nav mesh agent. This is why we needed the AI at the top of the script. So we go ahead and just name that my agent. And last, we're going to need a int that's going to be our range. Now we're going to move into the update function and we're going to be making a distance check. So just call this dist for now. And we're going to check the vector three dot distance between this object and our target object, which is going to be our player in this case. Now, after that, you are going to need to check if our distance is less than that range that we set up. And if it is, we are going to have our agent change its destination to our target destination. This is about as simple as it gets for an AI script. All we're telling it to do is check distance between our object and our player, and if that distance is below a certain range, we're going to go ahead and set it to move to that player. There is a tiny bit more setup we need to do also. Go ahead and go back to the editor, and we're going to add our script to our enemy, which is just a cube for now. And after doing that, we go ahead and pull our FPS controller as the target and add a fresh nav mesh agent. Now the agent, you can change the speed. I'm gonna speed it up just a bit because it feels a bit cleaner for testing and go ahead and add that to our enemy follow script as well as changing our range to 30. Now we should have done this earlier, but you need to go ahead and set up a navigation tab in Unity and go ahead and make sure the terrain is static and bake it to make it so our enemy can walk on that. Now we can test. And as you can see, as soon as we enter the cube's range, it goes ahead and follows us. And it is simple as that to use our level one player follow script. Now we're going to take it up a notch using the same script. Go ahead and add a new game object, and we're gonna call that the current target. After that, you can go ahead and add another variable, and this is going to be another int called our tether range. And after adding that, we can do a public vector three and call this start position or start pose if you wanna be lazy. Now we are going to need to make a completely new method and we're gonna go ahead and call this our distance check since we're gonna be doing our distance check inside of this. Now we can move everything we did in our update to this function and we're going to also add a little bit to this function First up, we need to change what happens when our distance is less than our range. We're just going to simply change our current target equal to our actual target. Now, slight mistake here that I fix later, our distance should be checking if it is greater than our tether range, not less than. But if our distance is greater than our tether range, we're going to go ahead and set our current target equal to nothing again. Now we are going to need to go ahead and run and invoke repeating. And this is to constantly run our distance check function. Instead of updating every frame, we're going to run this every half second. So it is extremely, extremely more efficient and it won't even be much worse than before. And we also need to set our start position equal to the start position of our enemy. 
Now I know this is a lot, but bear with me. We're gonna go ahead and go into our update function. And if our current target isn't null, so if we have a target, then we're going to go ahead and set our actual nav mesh agent to go to the position of our current target. This is important because even though it's run in update, it will only run if we actually have a target now. We're also gonna need a else if for if our agent.destination isn't at our start position. So if it's not going to the start position, then we're gonna need it to actually go there if we don't have a target. So we have our two options. We either go to our targets position or we go to the start position if it's not already at start. All we need to do now is go back to the editor and change around a few of our values. We need to set our tether range. And as I test and play this, that's where I realize I messed up that distance to the tether range. So just make sure you're checking if distance is greater than your tether range, not less than, or it's not going to work right. But as you can see when it's working, it looks almost the same as our first iteration and it's using much, much less computing power. This method could most likely support up to many dozen to even low hundreds of AI objects in your scene. Now we're going to try the third and final method that I've been messing with lately, and that is to do a simple trigger collision check. To do this method, we're going to need to make a child object on our cube and give our collider to this object. This is going to be a massive collider because it's going to be our essentially distance check that we were just doing in the last script. I'm going to go ahead and set it at 40 and 40 with a height of 10. Make sure if you move the collider, you move the parent object though because you don't want to move just the child on it. So after setting this up, we need to go ahead and change our layer for this object. This isn't super necessary, but if you're ever going to do a ray cast in your scene, you don't want it to be able to hit this layer specifically. So I would change it to something else just to, you know, avoid problem in the future. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our script and you can call it something like enemy collision or enemy collision follow, whatever you want. The names don't matter too much. In the script, we're going to take our beginning of our other one with our target and agent, make sure we have the unity engine.ai enabled and we're going to go ahead and make our on trigger enter right away. So what this script does is essentially when a physics object enters that collider that we made, we're going to run something. And in this case, we're gonna check if the physics object that hits it has a tag of player. If it does, we're simply going to set our target to that player. And make sure you are using a trigger here because we don't want actual collision on this object. So next, we're going to go ahead and do our update, which is pretty much the same as before. If our target is not null, then we're gonna do the same thing and set our agent destination to our player. You'll see this script has a lot of similarities. The only big difference is how we're actually getting our player object. Now, we're also gonna to wanna to add a trigger exit. This is optional. If you want the enemy to permanently chase the player, then you don't need to do this. But if you want the object to or the enemy to stop chasing the player, then you're gonna go ahead and need to add an exit so we can change our target equal to null if the player leaves their quote unquote aggro range. Now we're going to need to head back to the editor and actually change a few variables here. First, make sure whatever your player object is is tagged as our actual player. It's very important and easy to forget. Go ahead and remove our old script, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the new one. So go ahead and put our nav mesh agent in the new script, and make sure you add a rigid body to our enemy object. With triggers and physics in general, one of the two objects hitting the trigger needs to have a rigid body or nothing will happen. Now we can go ahead and test, and as you can see, when we run into range, looks the same as before, we get our aggro, and we go ahead and run out, and right now the object is still running to the player's old destination, but you can do the same thing we had in the other one and make it run back to the beginning if you want. 